While preparing for the first human-crewed Vostok mission, 27-year-old Yuri Gagarin rose to the top of his class thanks to his memory, reflexes, and poise during a crisis. Gagarin was always calm and collected. He requested music to be played right before the mission and had a steady heart rate of 64 beats per minute, half an hour before the flight that changed the course of the space race. That characteristic poise would come in handy when Gagarin's spacecraft seemed like it couldn't survive re-entry. A strap attached to the service module failed to separate from his capsule and ultimately sent the cosmonaut into a dangerous spin on his way back to Earth. Although this wild ride back to Earth is a great story that had a positive ending, the event was kept a closely guarded secret by the Soviets. To show the USSR in the best light possible, the Vostok program only publicized the best parts of every mission. For decades, the minute details about the flight itself, especially what caused the separation of the capsule and its instrument module, remained unknown. Even 50 years later, wildly inaccurate rumors are spread amongst space enthusiasts. Although most people know Gagarin as the first man to reach space orbit, this also turned him into the first person to eject from a spaceship. Vostok 1 In October 1957, the Soviets beat the Americans and launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite, into orbit. That's how the space race, a competitive show of power between the USA and the USSR, began. In the early 60s, the USSR was largely recognized as the race leader, all thanks to the Vostok program. With this spaceflight plan, the Russians became the first to send a man into space. Right after Sputnik, the Soviets began preparations for human-crewed missions. They developed the Vostok spacecraft, placed on top of the Vostok rocket, a 98-foot launch vehicle. This was a highly ambitious project, with over 123 organizations and 36 factories associated with the operation. As a repurposed three-stage rocket for unmanned missions, the Vostok crew accommodation was for one suited cosmonaut. The spacecraft's final design consisted of two central components, a descent module with the pilot cabin and the instrument module equipped with a braking engine. A rather rudimentary spacecraft, the spherical Vostok capsule inside the cabin had minimal control systems since engineers were uncertain about how zero gravity would affect the pilot. Most actions would be coordinated by experts on the ground. In case of a crisis, a written code in an envelope was put inside the spacecraft. This would allow the pilot to take manual control if necessary. The spacecraft only had two windows, one above the crew member in the entry hatch and another at his feet. There was no soft landing system. The pilot would use the ejection seat from the capsule for a separate landing with his own parachute. Between May 1960 and March 1961, Vostok launched numerous uncrewed mission tests to examine and develop the Vostok rocket program order and its space capsule. These missions had varying degrees of success, with half of them ending in a high degree of destruction. But the final two, Korabi Sputnik 4 and Korabi Sputnik 5, were total successes. After the success of those two missions, the Soviet Union was ready for the first crewed spaceflight in history. As launch day came closer, the Soviet Union prepared for all possible outcomes and wrote three different press releases, one in case of success and two others if the mission failed. It would only be known 10 minutes after burnout and 25 minutes after launch if a steady orbit had been achieved or not. They also equipped the capsule with 10 days' worth of provisions in case of engine failure, which would have required the pilot to wait for the orbit to naturally decay. Yuri, everything will be fine. Finally, on April 12, 1961, the world changed forever. 27-year-old Yuri Gagarin was chosen to become the first human to travel to space and orbit the Earth during the Vostok 1 mission. German Titov and Grigory Nelyubov were Gagarin's backups in case of emergency. Gagarin entered the Vostok 1 aircraft at 4.10 Universal Time Coordinated and was relatively calm, even chatting with his supervisors. The spacecraft hatch was closed 40 minutes later, as it was discovered that the seal was not complete. Technicians then had to unscrew it and put it back together before closing the hatch. Public records state that Gagarin requested music to play over the radio. This surprised his supervisors, who also noted that half an hour before the famous launch, the cosmonaut's pulse was registered to be 64 beats per minute. 
However, Dr. Ada Korovskaya's account of the events is a bit different than the public version. After examining the 27-year-old before the mission, he stated that, quote, Gagarin looked more pale than usual. He was unsociable and quiet, which was not like him at all. He would answer by nodding or a short yes to all questions. Sometimes he would start humming some tunes. This was a different Gagarin. We geared him up and hugged. And I said, Yuri, everything will be fine. And he nodded back. At 6.08 UTC, the launch that would change the course of history began. Chief designer Sergei Korolev was worried sick, since up to that moment, the Soviet space launch rate was only 50%. On the radio, Korolev nervously announced, quote, Preliminary stage. Intermediate. Main. Liftoff. We wish you a good flight. Everything is all right. The excited Gagarin replied, Let's roll. Gagarin reached orbital flight only 10 minutes after launch. Vostok 1 traveled around the Earth a single time, reaching an altitude of 203 miles. Back to Earth. As the Vostok prepared for Earth re-entry, everything seemed to be going according to plan. After completing the 40-second burn of the braking engine, the spacecraft plunged back into the atmosphere. Gagarin saw a bright fire appear behind his two windows, along with a crackling noise of his heat shield burning away. On the official report, Gagarin stated, quote, As soon as the braking engine shut down, there was a sharp jolt. The spacecraft started spinning about its axis with very high speed. The Earth was passing in the window from top to bottom and from right to left. The speed of rotation was around 30 degrees per second, no less. Everything was spinning. One moment I see Africa, another the horizon, another the sky. Gagarin knew to expect the separation of his re-entry capsule from the instrument module to take place 10 seconds after the crimson burn, but this did not occur. The Vostok continued to tumble as it approached more layers of the atmosphere. Despite this, Gagarin remained optimistic, and he did not make any noise as he believed it might disturb the spacecraft. It was later discovered that a valve inside the engine had failed to shut down entirely at the start of the engine burn phase, which provoked a fuel leak. Because of this, the engine ran out of power and shut down about a second earlier than scheduled. Eventually, G-forces dwindled, and the capsule started descending safely, which gave the likely dizzy Gagarin the green light to eject from his craft. The hatch of the capsule was discarded. A few seconds later, Gagarin ejected from Vostok at an altitude of 4.35 miles. His ejection seat then fell away, and the first ever cosmonaut was left falling towards Earth. The main parachute and its backup were deployed successfully, and Gagarin descended under two parachutes for almost ten minutes. According to Gagarin, he landed gently and plowed dirt in an open field close to the town of Engels, but official records state his landing was near the village of Smilovka. One hour and 48 minutes after launch, the Vostok spacecraft entered the atmosphere and landed in Kazakhstan. The exact time of landing is debated. According to the official post-flight report dated May 29, 1961, published in 2011, the descent module landed at 10.48 and the pilot at 10.53 Moscow time. They landed about a mile away from each other. A local farmer and her five-year-old granddaughter were the first to spot the orange suit-clad man emerging from the pod. Although they were scared at first, Gagarin, always confident and calm, comforted their worries. He later recalled, quote, when they saw me in my spacesuit and the parachute dragging alongside as I walked, they started to back away in fear. I told them, don't be afraid. I am a Soviet like you, who has descended from space, and I must find a telephone to call Moscow. After Gagarin's flight report was published by the Soviet Union, several witnesses of the events denied any problems during the re-entry. They tried to explain the strange situation by attributing Gagarin's confusion to adrenaline and the heat of the moment its separation. The International Aeronautical Federation had stated that, for a mission to be counted as an official spaceflight, the pilot had to land with the spacecraft itself. Therefore, Soviet leaders indicated that Gagarin had touched down with the Vostok 1. They did not reveal that the pilot had ejected until a decade later, in 1971. Regardless of the ejection, Gagarin set the record as the first person to leave Earth's orbit and travel into space. Yuri Gagarin became an international sensation. Hundreds of thousands of people celebrated him in a parade in Red Square, a public plaza in Moscow, a few days after his iconic journey. April 12th, the Vostok 1 mission's anniversary, is commemorated as Cosmonautics Day in Russia. The Vostok program was meticulously planned to show the Soviet Union in the best possible light. 
but the revelation about his ejection doesn't change the reality of Yuri's accomplishment. It was a successful mission that changed the world. The veil of secrecy surrounding the details only adds a fascinating layer to the story.